Liberate IT is an Oracle NetSuite solution provider that has been servicing Australian and New Zealand companies since 2011. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Julius Haralampo, and you are tuned in to another episode of Digital Liberation, a podcast brought to you by the good folks here at Liberate IT, where we talk to the big thinkers of the world of business. And we have a very, very special guest today. And like a praying mantis snacking on the brains of a caterpillar, I'm going to be picking his mind. It's none other than the esteemed business systems expert, the revered solutions consultant, the very well-reputed NetSuite veteran, ERP extraordinaire, the general manager of Liberate IT. It's Mr. Paul Beatty. Paul Beatty, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Julius. It's lovely to be here. Anytime you need me to introduce you to Zoom meetings, I can give you that same introduction before you actually enter the meeting. I would love that introduction. It's uh, gone straight to my head, of course. Of course, of course. You're still fitting in the frame, so that's all that matters. <laughs> so, for 10 years, you've been steering HMAS Liberate sometime into unknown waters. Um, can you tell us, first of all, if we rewind it a little bit, uh, what was your professional career before Liberate? Yeah, well, interestingly, I've been doing ERP for coming up 25 years now, which which suggests I'm I'm I'm, I'm very very old now, and I would have grey hair if, if I could have it. <laughs> um, but I actually started my my life as, as a product manager. Um, that's what I was going to do for all my life. I was I was a product manager uh, with New Zealand Post uh, for the first five years, uh, running lots of marketing work, but. Uh, what sort of interested me was some of the analysis that I had to do there. And when I left uh, New Zealand Post, when I left New Zealand to go over to London on my OE, uh, what sort of got me interested was profitability analysis, business analysis, running big spreadsheets to dig down into how a business operates and what makes its money and, and what things are going well and what things aren't going well and suggest ideas to improve things. Uh, did that for a couple of years, worked for the BBC and various futures and options companies around uh, London and had a great time. Headed off to Dublin and uh, a sage partner picked me up there specifically uh, to go out and, and sell the larger sage products, which were huge in uh, the UK and Ireland at the time. Uh, but some of it was because of my business experience and to go out and talk to prospective customers, business owners, uh, both small and large, and just talk to them about, well, your processes uh, perhaps could be improved and here's a way to do it. And once I got into that gig, I absolutely had a ball. Worked for a Sage Partner there for many years, then moved to Scotland, uh, worked for another Sage Partner there for five years, uh, had a lot of success. We became one of the biggest Sage partners in the UK and Ireland. I went back there again for another five year stint. And again, we became the biggest Sage partner in Ireland. Uh, and then it was time to come home. What a grand odyssey. So it sounds like it was a very organic shift towards ERP. Uh, now, how did you get started with Liberate? So I arrived in the country and uh, by this time I had an Irish wife with me and two uh, Irish uh, daughters and uh, we were looking um, to set up in New Zealand and, and you know, live the lifestyle, find a place at the beach to, uh, to about a while away my days. And You couldn't find any beaches very, in Ireland? Yeah, well, lots of beaches in Ireland, just perhaps not so much sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> and the Puerto cow trees, you know. Uh, yeah. So just, just, just lifestyle was was very much uh, brought me back to New Zealand. And very fortuitously, at the time I arrived, two people that ran a very large SAP practice in New Zealand, Nick McCahey and Jim Brody, were looking to set up a new company in the mid market space and had chosen Netsuite, which was underrepresented here in New Zealand. Uh, as, as their product and look I've been doing mid-market with Sage for 15 years by this stage and knew about NetSuite, knew the cloud was coming, knew it was the only true multi-tenanted uh, ERP platform and just jumped at the chance. They seemed to like me because I, 
had some heritage there and they, their experience was all tier one, of course. So uh, I was able to provide some insight into what it was like selling and talking to uh, tier two size businesses. Okay, okay. Now, ERP is a, is a big, complex beast. Um, we know it can do wonders for business, but it's certainly not a, a quick sales cycle. How do you go about um, even even starting those conversations? Like, what's the what's the elevator pitch for a business who is perhaps looking to upgrade to an ERP? Well, it's interesting when I I mean I do what I do because I because I love talking to entrepreneurs. I love talking to business owners who have put everything into making something beautiful, making something that has been their passion. Mm. And they, every time I talk to somebody like that, they get to a certain size and they realize they're spending all their time doing administration or trying to hold four or five different small systems together because they're great. They're cheap at the time. And some of these small systems are really wonderful. But you get to a certain size and you realize that you're spending more time with administration trying to double enter information, trying to get one source of truth. So it becomes quite an easy conversation when you go, well, what about this process here? What about putting it all in one system? And once you start that conversation, eyes tend to lighten up and you're on the whiteboard and everyone gets excited about making changes so they can go back to doing what they really enjoy, which is making the widgets or doing the deals, growing the business because they all want to have their business be successful, they don't want to be stuck in the drudgery of, of the processes. And ERP allows certain size of companies to take that next step. Now, speaking of taking that next step and helping businesses grow, Liberate IT itself started off with essentially just yourself uh, and two other people, from what I understand. And that has grown to how many employees are we at now? Uh, yeah, there's uh, 38 people that uh, call Liberate Home now. That's uh, across New Zealand and Australia. But yes, on day one, it was me and Steve Pyer who are still with us. Uh, we both celebrated our 10-year anniversaries just recently. And we're a startup. We had no customers. Uh, we literally had to make up uh, the story, make up the culture, decide how we're going to sell this product, how we're going to implement this product. And some customers took a chance on us and 10 years later now 110 customers uh, call Liberate Home. And you are really practicing what you preach. You're living in the cloud and you're preaching the cloud. Yeah, that was one of the things that, that you know, Steve and I sat down and we talked long and hard about is what type of company did we want Liberate to be? Because we were a startup. We, we, we couldn't make Liberate anything we wanted. And what we decided is we wanted a company based on, on some truth and on some honesty and on technical expertise. We didn't want a, cust a company that, that had a sales bell, for example, that we're only out to sell. We wanted a company that people would talk about and smile about and tell their friends about. Uh, and then we thought about some other things. Well, how do we want to? Do we want an office? How do we want to run this? And uh, we decided not to have a physical office. We would walk that cloud walk, as you mentioned. Uh, we would live in the cloud. We're selling a cloud product. So let's try to work from home, work from virtual offices. Uh, and also that helped on the whole work-life balance. And uh, I think that's also what's attracted some, uh, some of the employees. Absolutely. So when someone tells you you've got your head in the cloud, it's it's almost a compliment at this point. You say, love yes. it. Absolutely so love it. You have outstanding staff retention. How have you, can we talk a bit about the Liberate IT company culture? Yeah. I mean, the senior management team are all as one and trying to run a company where we trust people and trusting employees. I mean, it's, it's pointless to employ really smart people and then micromanage them and then tell them what to do the way that i like to run uh, a company is that employees tell me the way they think liberate should run that they tell me how things should be implemented or sold and then i'll either agree or disagree but letting them bringing ideas to the table i think is one of the 
big reasons people hang about. Um, I also think work-life balance is a really important thing. You know, we, we don't look at a really strict, you've got to be at your desk at eight in the morning and you can't leave till five o'clock at night. And as I said, everyone works from home. Everyone works, we, we pay for home office setups. Mm. Uh, their children come home. I mean, it's really important doing a really good job for your you know, professional career, but just as important is your family. And I want to recognize that. So I'm very happy when people come home from, kids come home from school and they want to go down the beach or go watch a, a sports game with the kids. I'm quite comfortable with that. And I think that's helped retention as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty hard to achieve burnout when you've got such a flexible workplace and you're getting to spend so much time with your family and you're not burning hours of your life caught in traffic. Um, which is which is a nice, refreshing change. Now, similar to Leonidas of the Brave 300, facing the troops head-on, leading the pack from the front, you're also still very much involved um, with the kind of front line, the scoping, the, the demonstrations. Do you think that's a, a key part of your, your leadership strategy? I think it is. Uh, there's, there's two parts to that. One is it shows that you know, this is a passion of mine, going out and talking to customers. This is why I've been in ERP for 25 years. And I really do enjoy going and talking to business owners about where they can take their company next and helping them grow. And as part of that, uh, if I can show the team that I'm, I'm out there, I'm doing the same job that they're doing, I, I'm, I'm assisting, I'm understanding what the difficulties are in, in the sales and the solutioning process, what the consultants are going through. I think that helps a lot that anyone in the company can talk to me. And by and large, I know the job they're doing. I know the hurdles they're facing and the struggles they're facing. And hopefully I can have some empathy and with a bit of luck, I can even uh, provide some assistance. Yeah, absolutely. Now, speaking of you know the, the struggles that businesses go through, how did you see COVID impact A, your clients and B, Liberate IT? Well, to answer the second part of that question, Liberate IT, because everyone had home offices set up, it was quite a simple exercise for everyone to carry on because they were already working from home. Our processes and systems were set up to work from home. So that was pretty easy for Liberate IT. The customers I was really impressed with they all looked at the what they were doing, what they were selling, and realized for some of them that they couldn't carry on doing that over the next month, two months, three months. They all changed. I had clothing manufacturers that were suddenly making masks. I had, uh, we had companies that sold soap to motels that were making um, hand sanitizer now. All the companies that I talked to the CEOs of or the business owners of, and we would discuss what you're doing. And look, we went to weekly cash flows, went to weekly forecasts. You know, we kept an eye on the money and made sure that we were solid. When I talked to them about what we were doing, they were doing the same thing. The resilience and the flexibility of the New Zealand and Australian companies, I was really impressed with, and they've all come through uh, and are doing well now. In your opinion, do you think all that flexibility is actually going to help companies stay flexible in the future? Do you think they'll continue to keep a lot of these um, like COVID safe practices moving forward, like work from home? I certainly hope so. It's, I think for a lot of uh, business owners and management, they've seen just what an engaged workforce looks like and that they can trust people. Mm. Yes, I've certainly seen some of the the, yeah, it does have to be in your DNA. Uh, talk to some business owners and they are really pulling everyone back into the office because that's how they feel they can trust. But there's mm. a significant majority that have seen the success of that and have seen the flexibility. They can now employ anybody and that's what NetSuite allows people to do anyway. Employ people anywhere around the country, anywhere around the world for that matter because it's all cloud-based. They are starting to you know, adopt that DNA, starting the processes. And I hope they do, because that's how New Zealand and Australia will compete against the Goliaths of the world, is if we're flexible, if we can attract and maintain 
people and talent in these countries. Have you seen NetSuite change over the years and do you see it continuing to evolve? Well, that's the neat thing about being a true multi of cloud product. Watching the growth, in the 10 years, I've seen so much functionality put in. Every six months we have a release and just more and more and more functionality. Manufacturing is a great example. When I started, it was quite a light manufacturing 10 years ago. Now it's a really advanced manufacturing system that basically uh, I would say you could put into most large scale companies now, manufacturing concerns now. Since Oracle purchased NetSuite, I've seen the expansion of that functionality uh, triple. They are putting a lot of money into it. And of course, we were worried with the Oracle takeover three years ago. But yeah, the fares have been surged. It is a lot of money's investments going into building up the functionality. So it will keep growing. Wow. I know a certain man in your organization has said that NetSuite can, in fact, do anything. Could NetSuite make yeah. my teeth water? I'm not sure your teeth need to be whiter there, Julius. But, uh... My Hollywood <laughs> smile shines again. Fantastic. Now, I know that you've helped scale up over 100 companies uh, in New Zealand, and now you're conquering Australia. What impact do you see Liberate IT having in the next decade? Oh, the next decade. That's, that's, a, that's a long time. I only think of the next decade over a nice IPA of where uh, Liberate might go. Of course. For the next two to three years, if we uh, take it off in some, some chunks, we'll be focusing on building the Australian market up. We've got a really good footprint in there now. We've got multiple consultants and sales guys and our relationship manager and our sales manager in Australia at the moment. So we would see us being the biggest NetSuite partner in the next two to three years in the ANZ region. After that, we'll be looking to expand our footprint geographically, but also there's other ideas that might come up. NetSuite will always be at the heart of what we do. It's, it's in our DNA. Everyone's a NetSuite geek and liberate, and I think that's part of why we attract uh, the best NetSuite people and manage to keep them. But maybe some other products that are around the NetSuite world will expand into so that we can grow Liberate that way. Of course, world domination for Liberate is, um, in 10 years is always on the cards as well. Of course, of course. I'm sure that was the initial dream. It's, it's yeah. sounding like a super exciting uh, future ahead for Liberate and yourself. You've dropped a lot of knowledge on us today. We've learned things. We've felt things. Thank you for giving us an insight into your journey, Paul, and your impact that you've had on so many businesses and so many people. We are super excited to see what Liberate is going to do over the next decade. Thank you very much for coming on this episode of Digital Liberation. Thank you, Julius. It's been a lot of fun. We hope this video gave you the information you were after. If you have any further questions, get in touch with us using the links in the description. At Liberate IT, we can provide free consulting to understand your business system requirements, understand your company growth plans, and provide free NetSuite demonstrations. For more information, visit our website.